welcome back to Beans. Today we are once again talking about the Order Kit and other buildings for the Order. The shoots of the Order are movable. Walter states that you attach a thread to the angle for the shoot and at the other end of the thread you attach a counterweight of about 7 grams. With this, the shoots are movable and can be brought into any position by the counterweight. But this was not enough for us. We'll come to the problems with the counterweights later. We wanted to make the shoots movable by motor. To do this, brackets must be placed inside the pockets to mount the motors. The first attempt consists of a bent metal angle which is glued into the pocket and to which the motor is attached. Provisionally we fixed the motor with adhesive tape. In principle the solution works. We were concerned about the longevity of this solution. Johannes then made the suggestion to create plastic mounts in a 3D printer. Since Johannes owns a 3D printer, we gladly accepted this suggestion. We have chosen a motor that makes rotations between 5 and 75 rotations per minute at a voltage between 0.5 volts and 6 volts. This ensures that the shoots move slowly. For the control, an Arduino Mega is used. To ensure that the motor stops safely at the end of the upward movement, we have made another extension of the circuit. A hall sensor is built into the pocket wall, which reacts to magnetic fields. A mini magnet is glued to the chute, which triggers the sensor. With this, the motor can be stopped. The magnet will be treated with color. If you are interested, we can make a video about the circuit and the programming. Just write it in the comments. To lead all cables under the module, we cut evergreen rectangle hollow profiles to the appropriate length, painted them with Tamiya XF18 and then glued them parallel to the struts of the pocket. Cables are led through a hole in the chute and then let down through the painted hollow profile. Evergreen round hollow profiles were set into the base plate through which the cables are then routed under the module. To prevent the threads for the shoots from chaffing due to the frequent movement, we placed a spring steel wire through the upper part of the pocket walls, on which brass rope pulleys then run. Now for the other buildings. Under the approach we have set two more sheds, as in the original. The buildings are from Yoswood. Once a corrugated iron shed and a corrugated iron barrack.
from the remains of the cage ladders we made excess ladders for the sheet piles. The first gluing attempts were not successful yet. The ladders keep falling off. The glue dots are very small and you come when working always against the ladders. But we will still also solve this problem. At different places in the lower area electric cabinets are planned. Here are some examples. We still have to see where exactly they will be placed. One electric cabinet will be placed below the stairs at the end of the dock. The other positions are not yet fixed. In the middle, below the pockets, a walkway made of wooden planks will be installed. It is still being discussed whether a railing will be installed. And briefly back to the stairs from the previous video. At the approach we used the Tichy Train platform parts to build a catwalk from the ladder to the building on the approach. The handrails of the stairs as well as of the catwalk were colored yellow like in the original. We kept the cover plates of the pockets removable. The cover plates are held to the pockets by four magnets, which are also responsible for the power supply. Two poles for the DCC traction current and two poles for the lightning. We did not glue the rails directly to the cover plates. Instead, we glued rail joiners onto the cover plates in which the rails are then guided. Because our system is modular and transportable, the rails have the possibility to work at temperature changes without bursting off. Of course, the rails are also rusty colored. In order to have the pockets optimally aligned at the module transitions, we press spring steel wire 
2 mm into the existing slots across the module slots. One more addition to the last video. We decided to put two lamps at the end of the dock, which are double-sided, which we built from the surplus lamps. In addition, Wooden lamps will be placed under the approach. These were now the most important points of the kit bashing or the extension. As announced at the beginning, a remark about the chutes and the counterweight. Since we don't want to motorize all the chutes, the re remaining ones should be equipped with Walter's suggestion. On the one hand for cost reasons, on the other hand only every second chute can be lowered into the hatch of the ship. There will be a video about the ship too. The specification of Walter's with the counterweight has a problem. If you put the counterweight into a pocket, it comes out of the chute when the chute is on top. In other videos, we have seen that the counterweight is lowered behind the pocket. This does not look good and would also cause problems during transportation. Since we will not move the non-motorized chute, we have glued the thread in the pocket in such a way that the chute is in the upper position. If you have any questions, post them in the comments. The next video will describe landscaping. Until next time, bye!